Clavius was a merciless Roman warrior, destroying the lives of everyone in his path. The meeting with Jesus crucified on the cross changed his life once and for all. Having learned about the resurrection of God, the Roman goes in search of him and gains faith. The wandering tribune Clavius notices a house on his way and meets a local resident. He pays attention to the Roman's signet and wants to find out how he ended up with him. Shortly before this day, Clavius was a brilliant military man leading the Roman army. Acting without regret, he suppressed a fanatic uprising led by Barabbas. The enemy declared that the Messiah would come and save everyone, but the Roman, having a different faith, did not believe the words of the enemy and executed him. As soon as Clavius returned home, Pontius Pilate immediately summoned him to his place, not allowing him to take a bath and clean himself up. Pontius reports that local residents believe in the Messiah, believing that he will become the god of everything that is on the planet. Skeptical about this, a church representative sentenced him to crucifixion. Clavius and Lucius, assigned to him as an assistant, must oversee the execution of Jesus so that the rumor about him will cease once and for all. Leaving the castle, Clavius witnesses an earthquake and realizes that this is a bad sign. Arriving at the site of the crucifixion, the tribune sees Jesus and two other men hanging on the cross. The soldiers break the victim's knees and abuse them in every possible way, bringing pain and suffering. People are rioting like never before, which makes the Romans nervous. Clavius notices Jesus' mother and decides that she should not see him suffer. Believing that he was acting humanely, the tribune ordered Jesus to be killed by piercing his ribs with a spear. Soon the bodies of the two dead are disposed of, leaving them in a pit. Joseph takes the body of Jesus, having received permission to bury him in his family crypt. A little later, Pontius orders the burning of the dead, but the church is against setting Jesus on fire, as this could lead to conflict with his followers. A little later, Clavius and the Sanhedrin go to Joseph's family crypt to make sure that the body of Jesus really lies there. Having discovered the tup, they cover the crypt with a huge concrete stone and apply a seal. Knowing about the talk that the Messiah should be resurrected within three days after the execution, Clavius leaves two guards in front of the entrance, ordering them to guard the entrance to the crypt. In the morning, at sunrise, Pontius calls Clavius to his place and reports that the body of Jesus is missing. The guards have disappeared without a trace, and followers convince people that Jesus is alive. Pontius is ready to punish the Roman tribune for an unforgivable mistake and execute the best warrior, but allows him to correct the situation. The emperor will soon arrive in Jerusalem, so Pontius wants Clavius to find the corpse of Jesus, believing that the followers of the Messiah simply stole it, hiding it elsewhere. Clavius goes to the tomb and sees that the cables holding the stone are not cut, but simply burst, as if someone had torn them. Something no less strange, mysterious, and frightening awaits him inside. The sack in which Jesus was wrapped bears an image of his face, but the tribune believes that this is an oil mark left by the means used to treat the body of the deceased. A huge stone, which was difficult to move by a crowd of soldiers, was literally thrown several meters away from the entrance, which makes this place even more strange. Having discovered a container of alcohol nearby, Clavius realizes that the guards had been drinking and were unlikely to be able to adequately perceive the situation. Having gone to the city center, the tribune finds himself near the church. As it turned out, the Sanhedrin found the guards and sheltered them, allowing them to rest and recover. Clavius insists on speaking privately with one of the guards to find out what happened the previous night. The guard knows about Pontius's pardon and says that they were attacked by Jesus' followers during the night. Threatening with weapons, they opened the tomb and pulled out the body of the Messiah in order to hide it and inform everyone about his resurrection. Clavius understands that the guard was lying to him. Moreover, he guesses that it was the representatives of the church who made him to say exactly that. Roman troops begin searching for Jesus' corpse, checking every body buried within Jerusalem. At the same time, 
Lucius eavesdrops on the conversations of local residents and exposes everyone who mentions the Messiah and his resurrection. Soon the Romans expose themselves to threats and curses as they dig up the graves of the Jews. They are not afraid of ultimate punishment, since they have their own gods in whom they believe. Trying to find out the truth, Clavius begins a series of interrogations. First of all, he communicates with the owner of the tomb to find out why he has a special relationship with Jesus. Joseph reports that he was touched by the words and faith of the Messiah, since for him there are no restrictions in religion. Jesus loves both loved ones and enemies equally because he is favorable to everyone who believes in him. Before Joseph leaves, he confirms that Jesus is the prince and returns his barbed wire crown. Next to appear for interrogation is a blind woman who has never seen Jesus, but believes that he is the only God who came to earth to save them. Feeling disappointed, Clavius prays to his god Mars and asks him to reveal the truth to him, no matter what the cost. Soon a local resident appears during the interrogation, claiming that he heard about the resurrection of the Messiah from two women and names the name of one of them, Mary Magdalene. Having assembled an army including soldiers who know this woman, the Romans conduct a search operation. In the evening, they surround the building into which Mary Magdalene entered and capture her. The woman blindly believes in Jesus and is not afraid of crucifixion or execution since faith is stronger than pain and suffering. Realizing that she is crazy, Clavius asks to release Mary Magdalene. The tribune hasn't slept for several days, so he decides to get some rest. In a dream, he sees Jesus and realizes that something strange is happening to him. A little later, Clavius meets with Pontius, who is outraged by the desecration of Jewish graves. At the same time, Pontius orders the search to continue, because they must find the body of the Messiah and dispel empty rumors before the Roman emperor arrives in Jerusalem. Clavius generously pays a local man to hunt down the followers of Jesus, who believe him to be a god. He names another believer who worships the Messiah. Clavius finds Bartholomew and interrogates him, threatening him with physical harm. Despite his cowardice and weakness, Bartholomew is ready to be crucified on the cross since his faith is stronger than his desire to live. Realizing that nothing can be achieved from him, Clavius releases the follower of the Messiah, deciding to use other methods of searching for the resurrected corpse. A day later, Clavius presents Pontius with a body with similar injuries. He offers to pass off the corpse as Jesus in order to appease the Roman emperor and not cause panic among the local population. Pontius is dissatisfied with the result and decides to send Clavius to another city, believing that he poses a danger to him and can take his place. In the evening, Lucius reports that the guards have left the church and are now in one of the bars. Clavius heads to the bar and encounters a second guard who has too many silver coins. The tribune realizes that the guard received money from the church for hiding the truth, but asks him to be sincere in order to find the body of the late Jesus. Realizing that there is nothing left to hide, the guard tells about the resurrection of Jesus. At some point, the ropes broke and the seal melted. The stone was thrown several meters away and sunlight appeared from the tomb against which they saw the appearance of God. He passed them by himself, without the help of followers or the Jews living in Jerusalem. Clavius is skeptical of the story, but understands that the guard is sincere with him and believes in what he saw. The tribune stays awake all night, once again checking the ropes, the imprint of Jesus' face, and his barbed wire crown. In the morning, Lucius reports that they were able to discover the followers of the Messiah. Going to the neighboring village, the Romans search every house. At some point, Clavius notices Mary Magdalene and hurries after her. Opening the door, he is speechless when he sees twelve followers and a living Jesus. The shocked Clavius immediately ordered the search operation to be stopped, and Lucius was driven away along with the guards. Throwing away the sword, the tribune entered the room to the followers who later became the apostles of Jesus. It seems that all this is unreal and Clavius does not believe his own eyes, 
but notices traces of stakes and spears on the body of Jesus, realizing that he really was resurrected. At some point, the Messiah simply disappears, and the followers go to Galilee, since that is where the next meeting should take place. In the evening, Lucius and Pontius break into this house, but find only a farewell note from the tribune who followed Jesus and his friends. Assuming that Clavius has betrayed him, Pontius orders a contingent of Roman troops to pursue Jesus and all who have followed him. Clavius keeps an eye on Jesus' friends but does not approach them, 